Good morning, Nuggets. As we get ready to start our warm-up today, I want to briefly review our weekly schedule. Now that we're a few weeks into school, the pattern should hopefully be coming familiar and second nature to you. But just a quick review. So on weeks that we meet on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, those are our vocabulary weeks. So every Monday, your assignment will be to have your vocabulary notes in your binder. Now remember, you can get those notes on YouTube, or you can go to our class webpage, click on the vocabulary folder, go to Latin and Greek roots, and then just copy your notes from the PowerPoint or the PDF file. Wednesday, you'll always have a warm up, and of course, you should be working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on your word trees, which are due every Friday. And every Friday, you will have a vocabulary quiz, or every three weeks, you will have a vocabulary unit test. Remember, those assessments are cumulative. This week, though, we are on a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. So when I see you on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, we will have some type of grade uh, checkup or an alternative warm up. Sometimes it may be grammar. Sometimes it will be strictly focused on your grades. Other times it might be working with voice or writing style. Every Thursday, though, you will always be bringing an article of the week to class. You will print that article, read it, and annotate it. And that's what we're going to be going over for our warm-up today. So in each of your crates, you should have received a Thursday's article of the week. Go ahead and take that out if you haven't already done so. And please read along. We're going to read the directions in their entirety. And then when I'm done for your warm-up grade today, you're going to be answering some questions um, about the assignment. So make sure you're paying attention. So here we go. Thursday's article of the week's direction sheet. Here's what you're doing at home. Do at home. Choose any article related to this week's assigned topic. Your article should be from a reliable news agency, not a popular blog or a personal website. Print your article. Read the article and take notes on it in the margins. Highlight any unfamiliar vocabulary words and look them up. Write the definitions in the margins. Bring to class for a grade. In addition to marking the vocabulary, I also recommend that uh, you just label and draw arrows and identify the who, so who is the article about, the what, what the main event is, when or the date of the article, the where, the location, and if you can locate it in the article, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, the why. That'll make your task much easier if you mark those in advance when you come to class the next day. Now, let me show you where you can find um, some helpful news resources. Um, you can pull your news from any place that is an appropriate news outlet. So it is an accepted publishing company or news venue. If you aren't sure, when in doubt, you can go to our class webpage. And under links on the right side of the page, if you click news, you can see there are lots of different options here, from national to international news to local news, like Inside Nova and Potomac Local. So you can click on any one of these, and you can browse for an article that fits your interest. Now, most weeks, I will allow you to choose whatever you want. Um, other weeks, I will specify, okay, you have to choose um, an entertainment article or a sports article. So you can go in here, click anything that you are interested in. You'll notice that on these websites, many of them have accompanying videos. It's fine to watch the video that accompanies your article, so long as you are printing out and annotating a textual article. Let's go back to the directions and talk about now what you're going to do in class. So when you come to class, you will have that printed out article with unfamiliar vocabulary words highlighted, and you've already looked up the definitions and written them in the margins. You'll bring that to class. Here's why you need it. For Thursday's warm up, on a separate sheet of paper, list the title, author, and date of your article. Except for number one below, down here, all questions should be answered using complete sentences. Suggestions for minimum length are given in parentheses. So on your paper, the first thing you'll do is write your title, author, source, and date. Then you'll answer the question, why did you choose this article? Answering in one to two sentences. Three, summarize your article using five sentences or less. Hint, brainstorm the who, what, where, when, why, and how of your article first. Then write your paragraph. You may not use more than five sentences. If you're using more than five, you're probably not really summarizing. The idea is to try and sum it up as briefly as you can. Um, think about the way that you would describe the article to a friend in just a sentence or two, and you should be on the right path. 
You can see here in the hint why I suggested to you that you mark the who, what, where, when, why um, in advance. That'll make your life much easier. Number four, write a paragraph giving your personal response to the article. You can give your emotional reactions, your opinions, and or your questions about the event. You must, however, include your thoughts about the following. A, why is this article important to me? You can be creative in your response here. B, why is this article important to society as a whole? What do I mean by B? This is the one that stumps people. I'm basically asking you, what makes this news? After all, every news channel can't cover every single event that happens. So why do they choose the events that they choose? Why do they cover those? So you're asking, what value does this have for society? Or what message does this have for society? That's what question B is really all about. And then five should be very easy because you've already written down your definition in advance. Vocabulary step five has two parts. First, part A, write one new vocabulary word you learned from the article. Using complete sentences, define it in your own words here. Hint, if you did your homework correctly, you should just be copying this from your printed article notes. Just be careful that you do say it in your own words and that it is a complete sentence. Step B, you're going to write another sentence, but this time, instead of just writing the definition as a sentence, you're actually going to try to use that new word in a sentence of your own. You're, so it says, write a new sentence using the words you defined for 5A. Your sentence must be creative and use context clues, or details, that show your understanding of the word. So for example, if I write a sentence saying, uh, this assignment is superfluous, well, there's no context there for me to tell that you actually know what superfluous means. So make sure that you include details that show your understanding. When you're done completing this part of the activity, which there are five questions, all right, and I will give you approximately 15 to 20 minutes in class to do this part of the assignment. That's it. So it's very important that you've read your article and you know it well when you come to class. I will not give you extended time. When that time is up for your individual portion, we'll have a very brief group activity. Um, when Ms. D, step six, when Ms. D directs you to do so, flip your response paper over. On the back, take notes on each group member's news article. List his or her name and the main points from his or her article in your own words. Your notes do not have to be written as complete sentences. So this just shows that you're listening and responding um, to what other people had. This activity will be very brief. You're not reading the article. You're not reading all your responses. You're simply just summing up what your article was about and maybe why it was important. When this part of the activity is over, you will do a short individual post-discussion reflection, and I will ask you to write about any of these things. You could write about just one, you could write about our, all four of these bullets, you could write about two of these bullets, three of these bullets, but obviously you must write about at least one of them. And this again will be a very brief response, just a few sentences, and you can write about the most interesting article that you heard about in your group, you can write about how you felt about a particular article. You can share something new that you learned that you didn't know before in your reaction. Or you can tell me which article you felt was the most important to you personally, or which one you feel is the most important to our society right now. Uh, when we're all done with this activity, you'll be stapling your article to the back of your class responses, and then you'll submit it for two grades. It's two grades because you get one homework grade for bringing your um, article to class, and then you also get a grade for your in-class work for this. Um, if you do show up to class without an article, I will provide one for you, but you will not earn any points for the homework portion. Okay. Um, now, like I said, I'm a visual person, so most people learn from examples. So here is an example response from our friend Super Nugget. So this is exactly the type of thing that you will be writing in class when you come with your article marked up with your vocabulary definitions written on the article. So you see the title was How a Broken Heart Can Kill the Elderly. The author, some of you may not be able to find an author for your news article, and usually when that's the case, the article is something called a wire story, meaning it comes from a news wire outlet um, where the articles are not published anonymously, they just come from a certain corporation or business or news organization. That's very common, for example, with the Associated Press. Um, source. This is the title of the website or the publication that I took it from. This is from the Telegraph. The date of the article, not today's date. So this article is from September 9th. 
two, why I chose the article. I chose this article because I thought it had an interesting title. See, just very brief explanation. Three, this is my summary. Notice it has to be in less than five sentences. It says, a study done at the University of Birmingham shows that elderly people are more likely to die if they're extremely sad. When older people grieve, their hormone levels change. This can have a negative effect on their immune systems, which makes their bodies less capable of fighting off illnesses and disease. Scientists are interested in this study because it shows that stress can affect our bodies more than we realize. Notice this summary is written completely in my own words, and I only took out the most important points, who, what, where, when, and why. This particular article did not have a when. Four, it's all about my personal responses. This is the part that I'm going to look at most closely. So this is where you talk about why the article is important to you or to society and just your reactions to the article. So this student wrote, when I picked up this article, I thought the title was meant to be a trick. I didn't really believe that a broken heart could kill anyone. Now, I'm not so sure. I know how miserable and tired I feel when I get all stressed out. I've also noticed that I tend to get sick after I've gone through something really stressful, and sometimes I get headaches too. My parents are starting to get older, and this article made me a little concerned about their health. I'm especially worried about my dad, who has worked many years in a high-stress environment in a hospital. I wonder if the scientists will do any studies on the effects of stress on teenagers who have too much homework. Stress and how to cope with it are important challenges that everyone faces. When people aren't well, all of society can suffer. Okay, and you can see I've really hit what it means to me personally and what it means to society, why it's news. And then in five, these are my vocabularies. So my first sentence, I define the word. So A, one new word I learned was bereavement. When someone is bereaved, they are grieving over a loss. So bereavement is a state of feeling full of grief. Notice I've written it as a sentence and I've defined it in my own words. Then B, I try to use a word in a sentence. The loving widow's bereavement lasted 10 long years, during which she refused to even talk to another man for fear of being untrue to her dead husband's memory. This is a good example because it has context clues. I say that she's a widow and that she's been mourning him for a really long time. That, those context clues show the meaning of bereavement as feeling full of grief. So this is how you do your Thursday article of the week.